Good morning. Let's get started on a couple of restorations today. Let me show you what I got here. I have four boxes full of different knives. The uh, from a military collection. The first one I pulled out, first box I opened, has several knives in it, and I got two of these. We're going to do both of them together. Now this is a EGW knife. That's what's on the tang right there. Now what these are, are World War II combat knives, trench knives. That's uh, what they were designed for. Now this one, and both of these have been abused. Somebody's beat this one with a hammer. And got some boogering on the edge. And they've at some point there's been a grinder on the on the blade because it should be thicker than that bottle opener but it's still a cool piece now this was the rarest of the two because it has the original handle now when I got this it was wrapped with electrical tape and I'll show you why in a minute which is a it's a good emergency fix if that's the only knife you have and I'll go more into the history of them, who made them, and all that at the end of the video. But here, see that space there? There would have been a piece of leather right there. And I would definitely fix that. But this one, the reason it was wrapped, was it's broken. See there? Now what I'm going to do, I'm going, I can save this one. I'm going to uh, rebuild this handle. This piece isn't broke all the way through yet, but it's cracked. So I'm going to take this off here and see if I can't slide it off. Get it all back together. Epoxy back together, clean it up good. And we can save this one. Now this one, notice anything different? Now, somebody's taken a grinder to this thing and just boogered it all up. And they took the grinder to the deceleration part up here. But that's okay. It's still cool. Still collectible. Now, the handle on this one, obviously, is not original. It is uh, looks to me like a broomstick or something. Which is another okay fix if you got to have something. But... They put the uh, the guards on upside down. So what I'm going to do is remove this. I'm going to repair this handle first. And then I'm going to duplicate that handle and put on this knife. So it will look more proper. More proper? Is that a word? It is now. <laughs> All right, so we'll work on that one next. Let's go ahead and do this one here. Now, this ring here is was for to, um, you know, secure it on with a lanyard, something like that. I'm gonna open that up and take that off. <coughs> we'll get it back around again before. Uh, goes back on there we go I'll try to keep these all in in order so it all goes back like it was okay, it's not gonna move down a little bit and see. Take our tack hammer. Yeah, it was already broken and have the rust is holding it on there. Easy 
easy as we can. Oop, wrong way. That way. Okay, we'll get that cleaned up. Put all back together. Okay, go over to the wire wheel, clean this up a little bit, that rust, so it will uh, slide off of there. Yeah, it's just about off of there. Let's see, hang on, I'm fixing to uh, fixing to make a mistake here and cut my hand. Fixing the rain. There we go. Now what I want to do next, this one's apart before I start working on that. Let me check these, they are, okay they're the same so it doesn't really matter which one goes where. They gotta be flattened back out. Do anything else. Get our pan. I invested in some new pans for this job because it's a uh, there's a lot of them. I'm telling you, a lot of cool stuff. Put this here and try to keep them sort of apart. Evapo rust, environmentally safe, food safe, all that neat stuff. This is very good stuff. Now this gallon was actually uh, gave to me after I had ordered a five gallon bucket. So uh, I have plenty. <laughs> and it can be reused and reused and reused. If you're interested in a five-gallon bucket, that's the way to buy it. Five-gallon bucket is uh, a little over a hundred dollars, but uh, it's a good investment because you can use it over and over again. Right, so we get that to soak and take a few hours. Get that out of the way. Now let's do the same with this one. We'll take it apart. And I'm not too persnickety about this handle. It's got a riveted on there. Turn the camera back. <coughs> okay, I'm going to go over to the grinder and grind these down flat and try to knock them off of there. And got the ends ground off of them. And just like that.
Now these are actually rivets. Some kind or another. See if we can knock them out of there. Anyway, I'll go over to the, I'll just grind them smooth on the grinder. Let's see, we can probably do it on this belt sander right here. Hang on. Hey, y'all watch this. <laughs> If they'll come out there. That one out. It's coming out, don't worry. one way or another. It just didn't know who it was fooling with, right? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Let's see where the other that one that one our other piece There we go again. Hands ain't working today. See there? Okay, there's actually a remlet of the uh, leather that was supposed to be down in between there. Came off of one of them. Alright, let's take this one over here. That one in there. That is safe to touch, it won't hurt you though. Alright, we'll give them a soak for a few hours and uh, come back, clean them up, see what they look like. Let's move on to the handle. Alright, we're going to mix this up a little bit of epoxy. Don't need much. Equal amounts, 50-50. Take your high-tech tool here, which is a stick. Mix it up. Now this thing looks to be in, made in two different pieces. But we're going to one piece it before we get done with it. Put just a little bit like this. And when it's damp weather like this and a little bit cool, it takes uh, just a little bit for this to dry. So we'll have to go on pause here in a few minutes. Well, if I put it on there the right way, it would work. Like 
that. Now we're going to take some high tech fancy clamps. Hold that thought. All right, sorry about that. Now I've got it all over my hands now, all over my phone, all over everything, which is that's what's supposed to happen, right? <laughs> Set these rubber bands and that'll hold it plenty tight. And this has a through hole and then cut out for the blade. The one I'm going to build, I'm going to do a little bit different. But it'll look the same in the end, I think, or pretty, pretty close to the same. We'll have to uh, get over on the lathe here in a little bit. Alright, so we got that one. Let's see, we need a couple more rubber bands. Well, maybe not. Okay, you know what? I think we're going to leave it like this. For now, let it dry. Then, see if we're going to stick it together or wait and just do it. Like it came off of there. Let me get this off of me. Okay, here's our new handle. Well, it's going to be our new handle. I'm going to find the center. Easiest way to do it. 1.60. 1.61. We call it 1.60. Hang on, let me get my machine to work here. Point eight zero. Hey, grasshopper. <laughs> That's an inside private joke there. Okay, it's got us a line there. And this doesn't have to be exact, but it's pretty close. Mm, let's see, now we're going to go... Oh, wrong one. How wide is our notch here? Okay, 0.68. Then we're going to go 0 0.70, one a little bit big. Eyeball it right there. Because this is way oversized of what it's going to be. It's going to be cut down. We'll just get our starting lines here. Right there. Now let's see how wide it is this way. Get a measurement that small. Point one three. Point one three will make it a half of that about point six. We'll just cut us a little slot in there. How about that? All right, we're gonna go over to the middle machine. It's, still, it's easier to set that up than it is to reset the router table with just a shallow, shallow cut. We're gonna make our cut shallow on each side, and we'll glue it back together. Let it dry good. Then we can, by that time, this will be dry. And we 
can get our shake this way our thickness may have to put it on the lathe and turn it make and do it by hand we'll have to wait and see never know it's glued together when I get done I hope all right got the mill set up got a quarter inch end mill that's the widest one I've got in a uh, end mill holder some of the tooling that uh, my buddy Ryan sent me when I got the mill. Cool stuff. Now volume will get up a little bit. So uh, watch your volume. got it cut and it is a little oversized which is fine which need room for the epoxy to go in there anyway that light maybe right there now I'll take the other one without moving anything it should be set up just right make the same slot on the other side then when they go together it'll be big enough to go in Okay, let's mix us up a little more epoxy. We got our cuts done. Good. See there. Like this. Don't want to get a bunch of excess in there. Like that. Like 
little tiny bit on this side over here. stuck together now it'll have to be trimmed to length after it dries because I left it a pretty good bit long now we're going to put it over here on the vise clamp it up and everybody's favorite thing watch glue dry <laughs> I thought the epoxy would be a much better choice to put it together with than wood glue because this is 3,000 pound or 3 ton epoxy once it's stuck and everything's on it will never ever ever come off of there there we go now I'll move on to some other stuff I'm doing and we'll come back in a little while all right this uh, epoxy is not fully set but it's set enough to where we can uh, go ahead and start working with it let's take our clamps off of here She's got it stuck in spots. There we go. Rubber bands are very good little clamp things to use like this. They're uh, get a great big bag. Places like Dollar Trees and all that for a dollar. Okay, we're going to clean this up just a little bit to uh, get it to where I can trace my pattern for the other one. I went ahead and glued it back together so we can get the size that we need. Now, I'm still being very gentle with it because this is very, very old wood here take a wire brush now I can tell right now that's going to take forever Now, if I'm very, very careful, I take it over to the wire wheel and just touch it up a little bit. I have to do a final cleanup on it before it's ready, but uh, let's do that. Let's take it over there. Hang on, just go with me. How about that? Let's see, we're on the little tripod. Easier than trying to drag the big one out. Where are my safety glasses? Now this side over here is a soft wheel. Let's try that right.
all right there we go we still got some uh some residue from that old electrical tape that was on there and we'll clean that off with acetone in the very end but it's all back in one piece good enough to get our pattern for our handle for the other knife and uh let's go ahead and take that one out still in the vise we'll trace out and uh not going to cut it we're going to do it on the sander we're going to attempt to do it on the sander and then the ridges i will attempt <laughs> to cut it with a file by hand and we'll see what happens because if i put it in the in the lathe it's an oblong shape and uh i don't think it'll work but uh we'll see what we can do all right, there we go. Here's our blank. A little bit longer. A little bit thicker. First thing I'm going to do is go to the chop saw and square one end. Get it good and square. Then we'll mark the length. Cut that. Then we'll start that. Now I'm not going to drag the camera back and forth, back and forth, but uh, You'll see what I mean here in just a minute. All right, maybe y'all can see this. We got it cut to the length. Roughly mark it with a pencil. Not a pen. Plain old number two pencil from years gone past. <laughs> Pardon me. Okay, there's our marks. Now we'll go back to the sander and just rough out our shape. Then we'll round the edges. Do all that think it's going to work that's not going to be exactly identical but uh it's going to be very 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 close just about got our shape pretty much the same either way that's still a little bit thick let's take down some thickness this is over on the sander. I'm just having to go a little bit at a time. If I showed you all of it, it would take forever. So just keep working it down. I'll show you in a minute. All right, got our shape about like we want it. Now we're gonna go in device. We're gonna start some hand sanding. Round this off just a little bit more. Then we will mark and cut the grooves. Cut those with a file. Coming along nicely. All right, so I'm cut our grooves here. I got them marked against the original. Triangle file. slip off of there like that but uh still got to sand it again <laughs> cabinet makers file Like that, we'll sand that one line off of there. Just continue on all the way down, all the way around. Okay. 
and we'll dress it up in the very end. Let's see, that's bugging me right there. I'm just gonna just sand it down like this. You get the idea of sand that out. You can see that mark there. Now, sanding my lines off. <laughs> Like that, we'll continue on, continue on. All right, another day. Uh, the epoxy in here is set up very, very well, as on my other projects. Hey, I got it all sanded. I think it looks pretty good, pretty close to this one. Once the color change, make it a very, very dark color. I think it's gonna look just fine. Should fit perfect. We're still in the evapor rust with the blades. So. All right, put this one aside. Now we're going to go to this one. I'm going to take some. Uh, I still got this. Lord knows how many years old. Stick them on there from the uh, original black tape that was on there. I'm going to take some acetone. See if we can't clean that off. The wire wheel didn't want to take it off. So. Just clean this up a little bit. And we'll take another look at it. All right, I got all the gunk off of it. I uh, don't want to take it down any more than that, but we are to bare wood. Sanded pretty smooth. I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, dark walnut stain on it, which will be very, very dark along with this one. Let it soak in for a couple hours, and we'll see what it looks like. I think it's going to look fine, though. I think it's going to be just fine. All right, put this down, and we'll go back to our attention black to, back to the rest of it, the blades. <laughs> I'll get it out in a minute. All right, I'm doing these one at a time so I don't get them mixed up. I've got these filed down smooth. The guards, they're going to go on the wire wheel. And I'm going to gun blue this one, or both of them. Because they uh, honestly don't look good enough for a high polish, I don't think. High polish will make them look worse. Now, I've got to do some filing on this one, but somebody beat it with a hammer. Right here and the edge like somebody had it down like that and was beating trying to cut something but uh anyway we're gonna make it look good file this down by hand and we'll get the wire wheel and it won't be too long and once the handle dries we can start putting back together all right, here's our blades all gun blued up, de-rusted. Now these guards are made out of some kind of a really soft metal. Now these were just stamped out when they built these in the factory. These knives were not designed to be pretty. Now the blades are very hard, good carbon steel. And uh, they were made for one purpose and one purpose only. And y'all can figure out what that is without me going into graphic details. But uh, <laughs> anyway, this one, somebody has taken a grinder to it. And there's really not much I can do with it. But uh, like both of them, if I go try to get in the pits out and all the scratches out, I wind up knocking out the uh, maker's uh, the tank stamp maker's mark and we don't want to do that so once they're oiled and the handles are back on they'll look they'll look good but uh this one the rust on this one the pits are really really noticeable like here that's uh where the rust ate into it this is actually the blade is in better shape on this one and this is the one that had the original handle which will go back on there. But then once it's oiled and a little bit more polished, it'll be pretty good. But uh, I think 
trying to take anything else off of it will take away from it the way I see it so uh, there we go now the handles I just put a coat of uh, clear of a clear lacquer on top of the dark dark stain I think they're gonna look really really good so while those are drying take another couple hours I spend a lot of time watching glue dry and waiting for stain to dry so <laughs> While they're getting uh, ready for all that and getting ready to put back together, I've got some other stuff to do. I'm going to do that and we'll come back to these and I'll show you what they look like. I got, <clears throat> excuse me, the first handle back on. This is the original. And uh, like I said, I was going to do, I put a piece of leather here, which will get dyed and trimmed down when it's dry. Got to epoxy that on. Top cap will go here. And then the ring at the top. Now when the epoxy dries, like I said, that will be uh, trimmed down. Let's see, I may even just trim it here. Yeah, let's do that. Let's trim it like this. And that'll look more like the pictures of these things that I've seen. Another a absolute ton of information about these things out there because they made millions of them, but they're a uh, Not a lot of them around. Now, as far as what they're worth, and I will, like I said in the video, I'll read some more history on them. But I've seen them sell on eBay from $29 all the way up to $400, depending on whether they have the original handles. In pretty good shape or not. This one's in, I would call it for what it is, fair shape. There we go. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, I'll epoxy this down and get it all flush with here. And then I'll dye this piece black. That'll accent it just a little bit. Then we'll epoxy this down and put the ring back in it. That's that one. Now this one. Okay, here's the handle that I made. The clear has dried on it. It's going to fit like that. Now this one I'll have to epoxy the handle in because I made it just a little bit big, a little bit different than that one. We'll cut our leather piece just like we did there. And it'll look something like that. It's not identical to this one. It's really close, and it looks better than a broomstick. <laughs> I think. All right, we cut another piece of leather. Not far from being done. There we go, all finished up. Now, we'll read some history about them from in the house here in just a little while. 
All right, this is um, about the best description I can find on uh, the EGW knives. EG Waterman Company. I know you probably can't see that. I'll leave a link to this page. They're actually got one for sale here, but let's see. Let's see the picture of it is right there. Looks very much like ours. Except we don't have the scabbard. Anyway, E.G. Waterman Company of New York City produced these World War II fighting knife. Very po uh, popular uh, USGI, USGIs, that's troops, during World War II. They were made with both wood and leather handles. And ours is wood. That's good to know if we get another one, we could do a stack leather and be period correct also. Okay. They were popular, they would rust. Yeah, that's what I mean. There's not a lot of good, good information out there on these. But uh, anyway, that's what they are. EGW made them in uh, New York City. World War II fighting knife. And once again, thank y'all for watching. Thank you for your support. And I'll leave a link right here for this place. They've got some uh, pretty good information on a lot of things. Thank y'all for watching.